chat GPT is one of the hot topics these days with it basically able to replace humans when it comes to writing. Results may vary, but can it generate a 3D model? Well, let's find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to 3D Musketeers, and if you're new here, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. We're going to be using ChatGPT today to generate G-code for a 20 millimeter calibration cube. It could go good or it could go bad, just like this ChatGPT generated segue to our sponsor. 3D Musketeers. Introducing 3D Musketeers, a cutting edge design and manufacturing company that's changing the game in the world of 3D printing. Whether you're a small business or a large corporation, 3D Musketeers has the expertise and technology to bring your ideas to life. Their team of skilled designers and engineers work closely with clients to develop custom 3D printing solutions that meet their unique needs. With state-of-the-art equipment and a commitment to quality, 3D Musketeers is capable of producing high quality precision parts quickly and efficiently. But 3D Musketeers is more than just a manufacturing company. They're also dedicated to educating the public about the power of 3D printing. Through workshops and educational programs, they're helping to inspire the next generation of innovators and creators. So whether you need a prototype, a one-of-a-kind design, or full production run, trust 3D Musketeers to bring your vision to life. Contact them today to learn more about their services and start your next project. That's ah, better than anyone that I've ever done. Remember, if you do want to support this channel, you can do so by heading over to Patreon and joining for as little as $1 a month or clicking the link in that description down below to join YouTube channel members. As well, there's a lot of behind the scenes content for the patreon members with this specific video that's really really good so good the cat's back but yeah like comment subscribe all those things i'm still completely and utterly baffled about how good that was chat gpt you win this one but i'm coming for you let's get back to the video you might be asking yourself what is chat gpt and why should i care so let's ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a large language model developed by OpenAI, which uses deep learning algorithms to create human-like text in response to prompts or questions. The acronym GPT stands for Moreover, ChatGPT has the potential to enable new capabilities such as generating personalized recommendations, conducting more sophisticated natural language processing tasks, and even facilitating more natural and meaningful human-computer interactions. I love human-computer interactions. Don't you love human-computer interactions, Victoria? No. She does. Overall, ChatGPT is a valuable tool for businesses, researchers, and individuals looking to improve efficiency, save time, and enhance, ow, their communication capabilities. Why did you, are you that excited that you had to bite me? We are very excited about ChatGPT. She is bristling with excitement. So, if ChatGPT can do language, we need to see if it can generate G-code. And to do that, we have to ask it some specific prompts. And well, you're going to get varying results. In fact, if you do the same thing over and over again, you're going to get different answers pretty much every time. There are some limits to ChatGPT when it comes to coding. And if for some reason it doesn't finish, just tell it to continue. And often it will finish off what it's doing or continue to go on till you need to tell it to continue one more time. We had varying results here at 3D Musketeers with ChatGPT for G-Code. Although I think a lot of this was related more to the learning curve that it takes to understand how to ask it something specific enough yet vague enough that it can give you the answer that you're looking for. There's a lot of possibilities here, and I have a feeling as more people do this kind of thing, there's gonna be more capability of it as it learns more and more. If you wanna learn more about ChatGPT, we'll link to it in that description down below. Of course, this isn't sponsored. We're just trying to have some fun and see what kind of uh, craziness we can get into. Let's see what happens when ChatGPT generates G code. This is what the code should actually look like, but unfortunately this is often what it gives us. Really, really weird code. It says that it left the layer counts as they are, since they already are correct for a 20 millimeter cube with three bottom solid layers and four top solid. Okay, fine. Chat GPT, I will check. So while this is likely a 20 millimeter cube, it is not multiple layers high. It does not possess any top or bottom solid layers, and it is certainly not in the center, which is where it generally should be. When we look at these two side by side with an actual Prusa Slicer code, this is a G-code thumbnail, so we can see that it does get some of it right, kind of. It is doing things like setting accelerations, setting feed rates. This is all fine, but it is very wrong 
when it comes to the actual code. These two are very different. This is using conditional formatting, which I do not believe that Prusa Slicer or the Prusa printers support conditional formatting in the actual code itself. G-code is pretty cool. Let me know if you guys want to see a G-code video. I can go through it, but I have a feeling it might be a little bit uh, dry in terms of content. But there is uh, there's a lot of code here, and that's it for chat GPT. Y you can see there is a lot of code. So there's clearly something going on here. I believe it directly involves conditional formatting. I think that there's hope for this. Certainly do not try this at home. You can very much damage your printers, but let's see what happens. And I think the big thing that we're seeing here is that chat GPT is choosing to use what I believe is relative positioning for everything, but instead we really wanted to use absolute and the extruder in just relevant mode. It's trying, but it's certainly missing. This is one that was generated in multiple pieces. Our editor, Andrew, has actually been helping me out with this because we're finding it is giving us varying answers. He had it get cut off from time to time, which is exactly what I was experiencing. And so you end up with these odd line breaks, which are not that difficult to deal with, but you just kind of have to know what you're looking at. We've got two G1 commands, so we'll just delete it and hope that it wasn't missing anything. That's going to be an interesting command because <laughs> it's definitely not right. This is probably the closest thing to a calibration cube that we've gotten so far. We can see that there's a line missing, and that is my guess for that random line that we didn't see earlier. These layers must be really thick. It's weird that we have one diagonal line, and it's it's a per it's. <laughs> It's a floating line too, not even a first layer. It's also only 20 millimeters and it's doing, okay, so it's doing layers every 0.5 millimeter, which might be possible, assuming the printer can go slow enough, but I doubt it. It's interesting, it starts at 0.3, then it's 0.4, and then it goes back down for some reason. But you know what? This is one of the more interesting ones that we've had. So against all better judgment, I'm gonna go grab an SD card and try this. I don't think this is going to work. There's a lot of issues wrong with this print, but you know, an AI wrote it, so it's clearly better than me. Let's give this a shot. Victoria, go get the memory card for me. No? Cat just wants to rub her face on things. Oh, look at this perfect Benchy that my Prusa did versus the terrible Benchies that the Bamboo did. That'll be fun for Friday. This is... Not smart, but I have that on this SD card. Let's go get it into a Prusa. Dumb ways to kill a Prusa. So many dumb ways to... I should do this on the bamboo. That thing's already dead. <laughs> but the bamboo's so new, it doesn't know what a bamboo is. Oh, this is a dumb idea. This is a dumb idea. Here we go. File is incomplete. Even the printer knows. This is a bad idea. Oh, even funnier, just it, it simply just doesn't work. <laughs> Take that, chap GPT. Well, that did not work. And I think a lot of that is because all of the start code is wrong. So I wanna cheat just a little bit. I wanna take a known good set of Prusa code which is this. This is all good known Prusa code. And I'm even going to give it the skirt line. All of this is gonna go away and get replaced by chat GPT. This is also a dumb idea. Don't do this. Oh, and we, we probably wanna keep most of this because this is all your printer settings. So we'll keep all of that because it's not all that needed. All right, goodbye, useful G-code. Hello, chat GPT. This is, this is dumb. This is a dumb idea. This, I am saying it now, is a dumb idea. It's a really dumb idea. But if it's dumb and it works, is it dumb? I'd argue that it's not. Okay, so now that we have added Prusa code, to the start and the finish. Let's see if this works. We're actually heating. This is good and this makes sense because this is actually Prusa code that is currently reading. Finger is on the reset switch because this could very well hurt the printer. Definitely, I don't care what printer it is. You, you don't want to hurt your printer. Okay, 
This is all still Prusa code, so I'm not worried about this. It's going to do its bed probing. That should all be fine. Finger is on the oh crap switch. It's going to do the skirt for a regular calibration cube, and then it should start the code that ChatGPT gave it. Hello? Right, it's it's gonna home. Yeah, that's fair. The chat GPT code has start code in it, so that's on me. Probably should have taken that out, but thankfully it's not going to affect anything here. Uh, in fact, because this is an inductive probe, the printer's not even gonna know there's parts on the bed. And if we're lucky, it's not gonna damage the ones that are there. Yep, we're good. Okay, it's extruding filament. Oh God. Okay. It's doing something. It is not looking good, but it is technically printing. And the motor moves at very odd times. Like you can see there, it's barely moving. Then in some cases it moves a lot. Miss Kitty, we're filming a video. The fact that this is even printing at all is nothing short of a miracle to me. This is kind of cool that an AI wrote this. It's just not very good at it. Okay, it's retracting the filament. So I guess it's, is it done? It, it, it's fully retracted. Yes, kitty, it's done. There is our file. Oh, it wants us to unload the filament. You already did that. It was unloaded earlier. Thank you. It's calling for a filament change. All right, well, we'll reload the same filament back in it. Filament is loaded correctly. What are you what are you gonna do? Okay, you're done. Alright. Hooray, we did it! Wow. What a calibration print. I'm baffled that that worked. It's not great, and it required some cheating, but it did technically print. To be clear, this is not a 20 millimeter calibration cube, and you should never use this to tune your printer, but it could be worse. So this is the code that it made. We can see the code that I left from Prusa, and then where ChatGPT took over. Not its finest form, but you know, I have seen worse. And if you want to see worse, stay tuned, because we got an interesting Print Fix Friday coming up for you this week. Let me know what you guys think. Me personally, I think that there might be hope, but it doesn't have it where it counts. It can generate G-code, but it's not generating good G-code. And it's having issues getting full responses. We don't know if it's something to do with the CSS that it's using to give us the code, but it did print. It did require some assistance, obviously, so that we could get the code to actually work on the Prusa. But all the code that it ran outside of the start code was code of its own, which is pretty darn cool. So no, don't worry. You're not gonna be replaced by AI anytime soon because if this is the best AI can do, at least when it comes to G-code, it's got a long way to compete with anybody, let alone the top dogs in the industry. I'd love to know your thoughts. That's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to pushing AI to the limit. Limit! <laughs> God. Oh, it's so bad. That's the push it to the limit song. Oh, Grant, that's that that's low even for you. Hey, thanks so much for watching this very odd video of us struggling to get ChatGPT to work. And a big thank you goes out to all of our Patreon YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Victoria is incredibly thankful as am I, for what you guys do in making this video possible and others just like it. Remember, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the links in that description down below and joining Patreon or YouTube channel members for as little as $1 a month. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series because some of these fails are just as interesting as this print from ChatGPT. All right, so that will be a video that YouTube suggests for you. Click them both. I think you'll like them. I'll see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Don't forget to leave a like. Take care.